Hello all, in this video, we are going to discuss about how IAP immunization schedule is different from national immunization schedule. If you are not confident about the national immunization schedule, please look at my video on national immunization schedule. Then you can remember this schedule very easily. So we are going to discuss about, we are going to see similarities, the differences in existing vaccines, then additional vaccines, then optional vaccines. We have two similarities that is birth doses, three vaccines which are given as BCG, OPV and hepatitis B all are same between this national immunization schedule and the IAP schedule. Then the other similarity is about rotavirus vaccine. The vaccine and the timing all are same that is which is given at 6, 10, 14 weeks. Then coming on to the differences in the existing vaccines. When it comes to OPV, only this zero dose is given. There are no other OPV in the IAP schedule. Then the next one is about Pentavac. There is no Pentavac in IAP. So these will be given as three vaccines that is DPT, Haemophilus influenza B and Hepatitis B. Here we don't have OPV. Instead we have IPV. IPV will be given at 6, 10, 14, 1 and half and 5 years. There will be total of 5 IPV doses and remember this is not fractional IPV which we use in the national immunization schedule. Then the other vaccines which are recommended during this period is PCV and rotavirus which makes during 6, 10, 14 weeks the infants will receive total of 6 vaccines. Then the other major difference in the existing schedule is about the MMR. So instead of 2 doses in national immunization schedule we have 3 doses in IAP schedule. That is one at the nine months, another at 15 months, then the third dose at five years. There are other additional vaccines which is for typhoid. We give typhoid conjugate vaccine one single dose at six months. Then we give influenza vaccine at six and seven months. Then after that second third, fourth and fifth year. This will be given in the month of April during the pre-monsoon season so that the immunity will be effective and they should choose the recently available influenza vaccine. Then we have hepatitis A vaccine. We have two doses for this. One is 12 at 12 months and another one is at 16 to 18 months. And remember if it is a live vaccine then we can give only one vaccine. Then we have varicella vaccine two doses at 15 months and 16 to 18 months. Then we have HPV vaccine two doses at 10 years and 10 and of years this is only for females suppose it is greater than 15 years then they need three doses so the additional vaccines which are required according to iap schedule is for typhoid influenza hepatitis a varicella and hpv that is human papilloma virus so there are five additional vaccines then we have optional vaccines we all know je is a optional vaccine under national immunization schedule here je is again a vac optional vaccine two doses at 12th and 13 month during this period cholera also can be given at 12 and 13 months then we have meningococcal vaccine which can be given at 9 and 12 months so the optional vaccines under iap schedule is je je cholera and meningococcal vaccines these are all not routinely recommended they are recommended at high risk situations so with this we try to write down the exact schedule of iap schedule ideally you need not remember each and everything the list will be available for practice you can always check and do for examination purpose you may need to remember this so at birth the vaccines are going to be the same so bcg opv and hepatitis b then at 6 10 and 14 weeks instead of pentavac we will give dpt hepatitis b hemophilus influenza b then rotavirus ipv and pcv so there will be six vaccines at this point of time then at six months we need to give typhoid conjugate vaccine and influenza first vaccine. At 7 months, we need to give influenza second dose and at 9 months, we need to give MMR1. 12 months, we need to give hepatitis A first dose and at 15 months, we need to give MMR2 and varicella 1. At 16 to 18 months, we need DPT, hemophilus influenza B, IPV plus PCV along with that varicella 2 plus hepatitis A2. So, due during this period also, we will get the maximum vaccines that is 6 vaccines. Then 2 year, 3 year, 4 year, they need to receive influenza shots. Then 5 years, they need to receive MMR3, DPT and IPV. 10th year, they need to receive TD and HPV1 in case of females. 10 and of years, they will receive HPV2 also. So the schedule is going to be like this at birth, BCG, Hepatitis B, OPV and at 6 weeks, the 6 vaccines which is given here then at 
six months we have this typhoid influenza one, and at seven months we have influenza two, nine months we have MMR one, twelve months we have hepatitis A, then fifteen months we have MMR two and varicella one. In order to avoid vaccine interactions, they have divided the vaccines into several months, but this may not be possible when it comes to the national immunization schedule. In government setup, the idea is to deliver maximum number of vaccinations with the minimum number of hospital turnover. So these are all the remaining vaccines. Then which is followed by 16 to 18 months, we have six vaccines again. Then second, third year influenza. Fifth year, we have this MMR3, DPT and IPV. Tenth year, TD and HPV2. So that is the basic difference between national immunization schedule and the IAP schedule. If you like this video, please click on the like button and share it to your friends. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.